good evening friends and welcome to yet another lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics today we will learn about fugacity and fugacity coefficient gibbs free energy for a pure fluid is a function of temperature and pressure now from the first law we know that du is equal to t ds minus p dv now if we add dpv and minus dts on both the sides we get dg is equal to minus sdt plus v dp at constant temperature the equation that is this equation can be written as dg is equal to v dp for an ideal gas we have dg is equal to rt d ln of p why because we can replace v as rt upon p and dp upon p can be written as d ln p now for a real gas therefore by logic we write dg is equal to rt d ln f where f is defined as fugacity now remember friends fugacity is a mathematical concept introduced in thermodynamics it has units of pressure now <clears throat> dg is equal to rt d ln f for a real gas which is nothing but equal to v for a real gas into dp therefore we can write d ln f is equal to v for real gas over rt dp now if we wish to integrate this equation on the lhs we will integrate it from a reference condition where the fugacity will be zero or ln f will be zero to a condition where ln f is ln f on the rhs of course when we integrate we integrate it from a reference pressure as 1 2p now this means at the reference state ln f which is equal to 0 is equal to 1 which means that f will be equal to p equal to 1 at the reference conditions now the reference condition for calculation fugas of fugacity is always taken as p is equal to 1 atmosphere in si system therefore we get ln f is equal to integral 1 to p v upon rt dp now if we want to solve the rhs for a cubic equation of state we fully well know that v can never be expressed explicitly as pressure and temperature terms therefore we have to modify this rhs to solve it therefore we modify it as drp upon rt minus p by rt dv what has been done exactly is that v dp has been replaced by dpv minus pdv therefore on the rhs we get two terms that is term number 1 and term number 2 which need to be integrated now for a van der waals gas we know that p is equal to rt v minus b minus a upon v square or pv is equal to rt v over v minus b minus a upon v now on integrating this is the first term 
and this is the second term. We add these two terms and we get ln f is equal to the RHS of this equation. It is interesting to note that for an ideal gas, A and B both are zero. Therefore, in this equation, if we replace this condition or we put this condition or substitute this condition, the second last term is zero. The first term becomes one and one minus one is zero. And the second term is nothing but minus ln V upon RT because B is zero. This is going to be nothing but minus ln one upon P, which is ln P. Therefore, for an ideal gas, we get ln F is equal to ln P or F is equal to P. This is the argument we supported and we introduced when we wanted to introduce the reference condition for fugacity. Now for an ideal gas, dIg is equal to RT, dLNP is equal to V, that is the volume of the ideal gas, into dP. Therefore, the residual Gibbs free energy can be defined as equal to RT dLN of F upon P. Now what we do here is, the residual Gibbs free energy is defined as the Gibbs free energy of a real gas minus the Gibbs free energy of an ideal gas at the same conditions, that is at the same state, that is temperature and pressure. Therefore, we can say that D gr that is the residual differentials of differential of the residual gibbs free energy is nothing but rt d ln of f upon p because f is that of a real gas p is that for the ideal gas we replace here for the real gas p as f and we take the difference and we get the equation which will be equal to v minus v ideal gas dp therefore we get d g over RT is equal to D ln phi is equal to V minus VIG over RT DP, where phi is defined as the fugacity coefficient. When we integrate this equation, of course, at the reference condition where P is equal to 1, the gas is an ideal gas and therefore the residual Gibbs free energy is going to be 0. Naturally, in the LHS, we get GR over RT. And quite naturally, the second term that follows, ln phi, phi at the reference condition is, ln phi is 1. Oh, sorry, ln phi is 0 or phi is equal to 1. And this is equal to integral P ref p v minus v i g over r t d p. Now the R H S is again modified because v for a real gas cubic equation of state which represents a real gas for a cubic equation of state v cannot be represented explicitly in terms of p and t. Therefore we modify the R H S and Substitute the van der Waals gas equation of state and we get the following equation that is ln phi is equal to V minus over V minus B minus ln V minus B over RT minus 2A by RT 1 over V minus 1 minus ln P. Now this is just an extension of this equation that we had just derived. We have to just put minus LNP on both the sides and we get back to this equation. Now again, for an ideal gas, we will get LN phi is equal to LN1, which will be 0 or phi is equal to 1. That is for an ideal gas, the fugacity coefficient 
is always 1. Why do we use fugacity or why do we introduce the concept of fugacity? It should be noted that whenever a liquid is in equilibrium with its vapor, we can show that the fugacity coefficient of the liquid is equal to the fugacity coefficient of the vapor. Now, whenever two phases are in equilibrium, their fugacities and fugacity coefficients are equal. We can use this concept to calculate the state variables for equilibrium. And that is why we introduce the term of fugacity and fugacity coefficient. Going back, note that fugacity coefficient and fugacity are expressed as state variables. Therefore, fugacity as a concept becomes a very convenient tool to calculate the values of state variables at equilibrium of both the phases. This is all about fugacity and hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Goodbye guys. Have a great day. And do subscribe to my channel. It is important that you subscribe to my channel because this is what motivates me to make more videos. Please note all my videos are free and they will be never put in private subscription because I am interested in popularizing this subject in the student community in particular. But in general, I would like all professionals to appreciate the value of chemical engineering thermodynamics and its application in engineering real applications where we can use thermodynamics to do some real calculations and understand the processes, the underlying concepts behind it. I would like to have some feedback about the lectures which I have prepared. This gives me some direction in preparing further lectures and this is very important for a person who is trying to communicate to a mass of students and professionals through YouTube. I hope you will understand the feelings and the idea behind my lectures and subscribe my lectures and write positive. Well, if you want to write a negative comment, no problem. But write comments giving me a feedback of how my lectures can be improved or what lectures I need to make. Fine, guys. Have a great time. Have fun. Have a great day. Bye.